Good afternoon, friends. This is G. V. Shivakumar, and this is about agile project management, agile requirements, everything, right? And it is the fourth part of the video. So, in earlier versions, we discussed about minimum viable product, minimum marketable product, or minimum marketable futures. MEP, MMP, and MMF, right? So we are now speaking about the agile requirements gathering. So in the first part of video, we discussed about what is agile, why we need agile, importance of agile, how to implement agile in the project, how what is the benefit over the waterfall methodology, or what is the difference between traditional waterfall methodology. And agile method of project management. So uh, we discussed about, uh, uh, say, for example, actually um, uh, agile uh, values, four different values, and uh, agile myths or agile manifesto principles. Some twelve principles are there, and then we discussed about uh, um, different agile methodologies. So Scrum, XP, Kanban, Lean, all these things, right? So all this part of this Agile methodologies. And uh, so how Agile improves the project, uh, I can say, efficiency, how to bring down the delays, how to increase customer satisfaction. So, what is the, uh, how we are doing planning? So, about the team size, everything, we discuss in the first part of Agile Project Management video. And in second video, we discuss about the Scrum related details. What is Scrum? Why we need Scrum? How to apply Scrum? What are the Scrum pillars? Scrum team? Scrum events? And then actually in the third part of the video, we discussed about backlogs, sprint planning, that is the different scrum events and the time boxing, and then how to sequence this uh, 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 scrum events, right, uh, in a sequential order, what is the benefit in applying the scrum, all these things. So, and then in the fourth part, the fourth part of the video, we discussed about the comparison between the traditional uh, project management method of requirement gathering and uh, agile method of requirement gathering. There only we are discussing about minimum viable product or uh, minimum marketable product, minimum marketable futures, all these things. Now, as a part of the fifth part of the video, we are going to discuss about requirement gathering. So, Agile requirements gathering is not a single stage. It happens throughout the life cycle, right? So, it is not at the earlier stage like a traditional waterfall, but rather in uh, Agile methodology, we have uh, uh, from end to end phase, we are having this planning, right? So, requirement gathering, everything will happen in the entire life cycle. In the beginning, a few requirements that are already known are captured and work on work on them in the work on them in the uh, beginning while the work is carried out more requirements emerge and are included in the product backlog requirements are generally written as user stories right so what is a user story user story or bits bite sized uh, understandable chunks of business functionality these are preferred way of documenting requirements in Agile. Like a soya chunk, these user stories are split into small, small parts. So the most commonly used format for making a user story uses three pieces of information, that is role, fu functionality, and business benefit. So we can describe it as, as a role, I want functionality, so that, business, so that the business will benefit. As an example for the, uh, say for example, we are developing an e-commerce portal. One of the user stories could be, 
as an online shopper i want to search for a product so that i can make the right selection this format of writing user stories mandate all user stories should contain business benefit hence it ensures that non value adding requirements are eliminated only value added requirements are considered an alternative format of documenting the user stories especially used for non functional requirement is uh say given given the pre condition when an action is performed by the user then what is the action taken by the system for example given the user is already registered when he enters his login id and password then he should be logged in within 3 seconds this is an example of performance requirement of the system a user story should always cover all the layers of the system architecture and not just one few layers for example a user story like yeah, as a user i want my name stored in the database so that i can retrieve it uh, retrieve it later on it's not just it's not a good user story as it is mainly covers the database layer a better user story would be as a user i want to enter my name in the system so that it will be available whenever i log in to the system this is the way of approaching the user stories how the user stories are structured how to be considered during the user story is right actually creation we need to use like that so um so yeah uh, user stories may be uh, of actually independent nature one user story should not depend on others right and they can uh, the user stories can be developed in any order and user stories are negotiable okay so in the in the sense team should be able to trade off by taking to other customers or users and user stories are valuable because should add business value to the story right and so user stories are estimatable because it should be clear enough to put effort is miss again and user stories is small in the sense represent small unit of work bigger user stories are broken down into smaller ones and user stories are testable in the sense that should be a way to confirm uh, delivery of the user story so these are the important characteristics of user stories so um the if if the effective user story should have six characteristics called invest i n v e s t invest so six the effective user stories should have six, uh, six characteristics called invest invest means independent i stands for independent uh, n stands for negotiable and v stands for valuable and e stands for estimatable and s stands for small and t stands for testable so called invest so what is independent you every user story should be independent of other user stories so that they can be delivered in any order required based on the business confirmation or a product owner uh, discussing after business they can uh, identify which one will come first and which or which one will go last and that is called independent so uh, in, uh, i mean no other is one user story is not dependent on other user stories second thing negotiable the team should be able to negotiate the functionality of the user stories with the user keeping in mind the time and cost available on the project is important the story should not be rigid it should be flexible and negotiable and third one user story should be valuable that is what we said it means that each user story should be deliver uh, business benefit and fourth point user story should be estimatable in the sense every story should be clear so the team uh, can put effort estimates against them and fifth point that is small user story should be small user story should represents a small unit of work to make it easier to track the work bigger stories take more time to deliver 
and if work is incorrect it could take costly rebirth as user studio should be small enough to fit one uh, iteration as well as work on user story cannot be spread across iterations bigger user stories should be broken down into smaller ones we shall see the hierarchy of requirements in the next section or next videos okay and uh, see uh, the user story should be testable in the sense it should be possible to have a test case for confirming that user story has been completely delivered without this we cannot say for sure if intended delivery has been made without test case we cannot uh, confirm it right so the user story is actually uh, uh, as also three c's associated with it that is called c. first c is card second c is con uh, conversion conversation third one is confirmation so what is card means written what requirements written on card and conversion means details captured in the conversion conversation and confirmation in the sense accept, acceptance criteria uh, confirm that story is done so let us see uh, let us we talk about actually card a user story is kept short so much so that it can be fit on a small card or a sticky note kind of way actually in in stationary mark we can see small small colored sticker uh, notes right? sticky notes square shape or rectangular shape right that is called sticky note we purposely uh, do not document too much the description of user stories as we want the development team to communicate with the customer to understand the details second conversation as the user story is short conversation between the development team and the customer is expected to happen on a continuous basis these communications are not to be documented anywhere along the along with the story they are only meant for better understanding of the user stories that helps in the in the development and finally we have confirmation so each user story should have associated acceptance criteria which specify the conditions that deliverables should meet in order for them to complete uh required uh acceptance criteria right uh so which are generally written on the back of the card or a sticky note to sit to write the user story so requirement hierarchy right so requirement requirement hierarchy will be the first layer will be epics second is futures third is the stories and finally task agile requirements follow hierarchy based on the size of work required to build them right uh, how to structure the hierarchy agile hierarchy means or requirement hierarchy means agile requirements follow a hierarchy based on the size of the work required to build them so common hierarchies epics will be the uh, in the top then features then stories and tasks large user stories are called epics or futures which are uh, broken down into user stories when user story is picked up for the development it may be further bro broken down into task all kinds of requirements that is epics futures and user stories follow the same user story format so everything is same and say remember the future agile games for the requirement elicitation so the most common way to gather requirements that is requirement elicitation in agile is by using fun way playing a game a commonly used game is called remember the future in this game we invite all the stakeholders from different levels then we tell them that we are at the end of the successful project plus 2 weeks right next ask them to list the list of those futures that were delivered in the release on sticky notes we gather all the inputs put them in clusters remove duplicates and stick on the wall say so remember this is called a remember future uh, game 
So core features, tradition features, infrastructure, success factors, everything will be listed. So okay, oh, core features means buy movie, rent movie, browse reviews, movie suggest, add reviews. And infrastructure in the sense, create database, load database, create website, website content. And additional features in the sense, add a new number, member referral, bill customer and contract, contact details. And success factor in the sense, team trained and then um, uh, VC that is uh, uh, VC approved, movies downloads and uh, Amazon Alexa kind of traffic kind of thing. Those are the success factors. We ask the stakeholders to think they are in the future because as per the psychology, we get more accurate results when people think about what happened instead of what should happen, right? That is the biggest uh, importance. We need to make the people to think that what happened instead of what should happen. So, this game helps in getting better understanding of the stakeholders' requirements. So, requirement initiation exercise is really good in case of uh, requirements like remember the future. That is one game. And then we have speedboat or sailboat, an agile game for risk identification. So, once you identify the requirements, now we need to identify the risk against each uh, requirement. Along with the requirement initiation, we also do risk identification so that extra risk related requirements can be identified. It also helps in prioritization of the particular requirement. In order to do risk identification in an agile, in a fun way, we often use the games speedboat or sailboat. So, the, law, the water in a uh, yacht uh, traveling in the uh, ocean, those show stoppers in the ocean are threats and those actually it is coming, freeing out in the uh, free air is that is opportunity. First draw a sailboat heading towards the shore uh, representing the product. A sailboat is a product representing a product. Also draw the water line and ask the stakeholder to use the sticky notes to post opportunities, positive risk and threats negative risk near the, near the boat. Opportunities should be above the water line and threats should be below it. I hope you understand. So, uh, for the yacht it uh, get a success to reach uh, shore, you should cross all these hurdles in the water and those outside the water will be an opportunity. So, this game is used to, uh, because in, in uh, above the water we have the air, it will push the yacht towards the seashore. But water will start, right? As you see any uh, problem in the uh, ocean current or something, it will not, uh, the yacht will not reach the uh, so, it will go towards the opposite direction, towards the ocean. This game is used, uh, used to identify risk, both uh, risks and opportunities. So, friends, so with this, uh, remember the feature for identifying the requirements and speedboat or sailboat helps, it's an agile method, helps to identify the risk of the particular requirement we are proposing. I hope actually the, the require, agile requirement gathering methodologies will be more, uh, I mean, whatever we describe is more useful. So, if, uh, if you have any uh, comments on this, please leave the reviewer comments in the, um, in the bottom of this video. Thanks friends. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for the continuous support. This is G.V. Shivakumar signing off. Thanks friends.